Welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I'm your host, Rick Becker, co-host, Lori Hintz. Hi there. And uh, it's another week. We, uh, we're, we're a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> no dollar short. We're just a day late. We're, but we're, we're looking forward to a really fun week because we've got some great guests coming yeah. up. So. Yeah, we've got a fun guest tonight. And... Um, and a lot of stuff going on. So much. Between, it's election day I know. in various areas. Uh, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and of course, Virginia. Virginia is the big one. That's mm -hmm. the one that we may get uh, a, a, a turn. Mm -hmm. uh, blue going to red mm -hmm. in the governor's race. A lot of the other ones are just kind of baked in the cake. They're either deep blue or they're deep red. Right. You know what else is today? What I is was just in Minneapolis this weekend. It is the 132nd birthday of North Dakota today. Did you know that? No, I did not. It is the birthday of our state today. So happy birthday, North Dakota. Ah, November 2nd. What else is it? Well, I'm going <laughs> back to the on the ballot type thing. Okay. Minneapolis has uh, a couple of measures, one of which is about rent control. So the oh. progressives really want rent control, which is obviously a pub proven uh, by Bad economists idea. to be a horrible idea. <laughs> but more interesting than that, they have a defund the police on the ballot. <gasps> That's right, I read that yeah. too. I think wow. it's gonna fail miserably, but it's, it interesting, it's interesting to, yeah. to watch. So, okay. the other thing is there's a lot going on. We're prepping up for the special session uh, in the North Dakota legislature next week. Uh, we know that the governor finally called us in. Uh, we were saying that all along, that he was just playing a game of chicken, um, trying to be controlling, trying to get what he could uh, before calling the legislature in because he wants all the control on how to spend the money, what it's spent on, everything else. He doesn't want any other bills dealing with COVID-19 mandates and so forth. So he finally called us in, and so now we have an unlimited number of days. Well, that's um, good. <clears throat> I guess. <laughs> Unless you're one of them that has to be there, there's, like me. There's that. <laughs> uh, but so we, there are uh, bills. There are 21 bills that have been submitted. Hmm. Okay. So again, we're there for redistricting. We have to do that. And then for some reason, everyone says we also have to spend the COVID money uh, under ARPA, which we don't have to, but the, that's the baseline. It's like, oh, yeah, we got to spend that. Um, in addition, then we're going to be covering some other topics. One of the big ones, of course, is COVID vaccine mandates and what to do about them. People are up in arms. They want something done. So interestingly, the, uh, the, the bills that legislators have submitted mm -hmm. just came out. Now, all the bills that the legislators submit are not necessarily going to be heard. They have to make it through a delayed bills committee. I won't get into the weeds, but normally if it was a regular session, they'd all be heard. Right. But now they have to go through a channel and only a select few, arguably, are going to be allowed to be heard and voted on and so forth. Of those 21, do you have a guess on how many they will actually hear out of that 21? Boy. Estimate, best <clears throat> estimate, hard to say? It's really up to leadership. I would say, well, I think, I think leadership would like it half? if there were um, less than half. Ooh. Now, depending on what kind of pressures they get, they may allow a lot more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but there are 21 bills that have been brought forth by representatives, five bills that have been brought forth by senators. Mm. Nine of the bills have something to do with the COVID vaccine mandates. Wow. Yes. That's a lot. Yeah. They're all coming from the House. Okay. Uh, there are four bills that deal with taxes in some form or other. There's various things there. There are four bills that deal with, um, I'll say, education, meaning primarily the, the more cultural things, the gender identity oh, stuff and the, and the critical race Got theory. It. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of election ones, and then there's one or two that are, that are just sort of random. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> tomorrow night I thought we'd cover the, the nine bills for COVID. Excellent. But tonight uh, I wanted to cover just a few that are dealing uh, with the, the CRT, the critical race theory, mm -hmm. theory, theory and, and gender. So uh, Senator Shibley has one in. Now again, folks, we don't know if these are going to be heard or voted on. They have to first go to delayed bills committee. If it makes it through. Uh, Senator Shibley has one here that says it's relating to curriculum standards for instruction on topics of race, gender, sexuality, and equality. What it says that, that the, the information has to be factual and objective. It has to be aligned with the K-12 strategic vision. Mm -hmm. um, a school district may not require a teacher or any other individual to provide instruction on a topic dealing with this type of thing ah. unless it's part of the course curriculum. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and this one I particularly like out of uh, Senator Shibley's bill. A school district, public school may not require a teacher or any other individual employed by the school 
uh, to participate in diversity or bias training or professional development providing or implying an individual is intrinsically prejudiced against another individual on the basis of the individual's membership of a particular race, ethnicity, gender, sex, or other protected Worded class. Worded beautifully. Yes. Very, very good. I like that. Good job, Senator Shibley. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, Representative Richter over in the House. Uh, we have standards and curriculum theories on human behavior. Essentially, it says here that the, um, the, the portion of the curriculum that we're talking about must clearly delineate intrinsic human nature from learned moral and political values in accordance with standards developed by DPI. So again, kind of going at it from a different angle, a little more covert. Uh, that's Brilliant. Representative Richter's. Representative Casper has one here. And I think actually I signed on to this one. Mm -hmm. um, it says, this one's just straightforward. Curriculum, critical race theory prohibited. Uh, and it says critical race theory. So it says it's prohibited, but mm -hmm. it, then it defines what is critical race theory. I was just going to say because there's so many sneaky <clears throat> different terms right. that are used. To, exactly that's right. The that's, whole, that's, that's the whole the rub of it. It's uh, not really CRT. Right. <laughs> it's, uh, so this says critical race theory means that uh, means the theory that racism is not merely the product of individual bias or prejudice, but that racism is systemically embedded in American society and the American legal system to facilitate racial inequality. So that that really is the the nuts and bolts. So I think Casper did a good job there. It's real simple, but I mean, Excellent. it goes right at it. Now the problem is that you can argue that whatever it is you're teaching may or may not do that, and mm -hmm. so. Uh, there's no way to get around this completely. Now, is there too much redundancy between those three bills? Will they pick one, perhaps, rather they may. than... They, so, Delayed Bills Committee may say, we're not dealing with CRT. And At all, ha whatsoever? And right, then and not have any of them go through. Okay, that would be a problem. So, if you've or got... Or they, they may allow all of them to go through. Okay. And if they do, then then it may, it'll go to another committee. The committee could, in theory, look at all three and say, you know what, we're going to make one take the best of the three parts. I love they, that they can idea. Definitely I think do that. that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last one in this sort of um, category, Representative Christensen has one here. It's a concurrent resolution. So resolutions don't really have teeth. Yeah, they don't have teeth. They're more uh, more of a we're making a statement. Right. Okay. And basically it, it says uh, it's a concurrent resolution recognizing parents as the chief stakeholders of the future and education of their children. You know, very, very simple. Love that so And that's, much. it says, whereas, 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 and it's very good. Uh, Christensen did a good job. It says, the 67th Legislative Assembly recognizes parents as the chief stakeholders of the future and education of their children. Hey, so. sometimes you just have to put it out there and say the honest stuff because you've got people like <laughs> Terry McAuliffe saying, no, you're not in, in charge of your kids. Yeah. Huge strategic well, error. Well, wow. That, I think if... You know, if Youngkin wins, which he, I hope, will, and I think he will. That Youngkin will win? The Youngkin mm -hmm. will, I think he'll win. Mm -hmm. um, but I, uh, I think if it weren't for the huge unforced error of yep. the education issue and uh, McAuliffe saying parents just shouldn't be involved in, in the, the um, design of right. their children's education, right. he, there, he, he, McAuliffe would still win. Youngkin would be out. So... Unforced error, but good. I mean, at least he at least he let just, it be known what I he believed. I love that when they tell the truth like that. Right. When they actually come out and say the truth like that, it you know it gets them every time. Yeah, so. it absolutely does. So th there's more coming. And again, folks, we don't know what what's going to be heard, but I want you to be aware of it. If there's something that really uh, hits your fancy, you can always talk to your legislators. I was just going to ask that. Is there something people should want, be doing? You you know, as always, contact your legislators. Let them know that you want such and such a bill or some group of bills to move forward through the delayed bills committee. Uh, the only way that anything ever happens is, is when legislators feel a little pressure.